The design of gardens has changed dramatically over the centuries. The earliest recorded gardens are from the ancient civilizations of Babylon and Egypt. The Romans later brought gardening to Europe, followed by the Moors in Spain and Portugal. During this time, Britain was still in the Dark Ages. Here is a brief history of gardening with examples from the gardens of the National Trust. Gardening became an art form. Wealthy people built more comfortable houses, cultivating the adjoining land into a place to indulge the senses. Religious refugees from France and Flanders brought new ideas such as knot and privy gardens. From the Restoration 1660, different garden styles began to emerge, influenced by other European countries. From France came grand hedges and sweeping avenues. From the Netherlands, canals and elaborate parterres, formerly pattern flower beds and from Italy, elegant statuary and fountains. The most prominent designers of the time were George London and Henry Wise. The natural landscape garden was the invention of the English. The garden philosophy of the 1730s was for nature to be guided, not regimented. Straight lines gave way to sinuous curves, canals to serpentine lakes, and avenues to clumps of trees. Flowers and fruit were hidden in walled gardens. This period was spanned by three famous designers, William Kent, Lancelot Capability Brown and Humphrey Repton. In the 1740s, Henry Hoare created the ultimate landscape garden at Stourhead. During the reign of Queen Victoria, fashion again changed. Influenced by the gardens of France, Germany and Russia, the vogue was for flowers, fruit, exotic plants and complex bedding schemes. William Robinson's publication, The English Flower Garden, helped pull together the wide-ranging elements of Victorian gardens. The ideas of William Robinson laid the foundations of the modern garden. Together with Gertrude Jekyll, they spearheaded the movement away from bedding schemes towards a more natural approach. The garden at Hitcote is a perfect example of the blending of formality and nature.
Its design has influenced many other gardens, including the Courts and Sissinghurst. There is no riddle to surpass the mystery of growing grass, which bravely thrusts its tender stalk through tiny cracks along the walk, and thrives in crannies of the wall, and in the flower beds grow tall, and grows and grows till summer's gone on everything except the lawn. It was in the 1830s that Edwin Budding invented the lawnmower, and it was in the 1860s when gnomes were introduced from Germany. Sir Charles Ilsham built a rockery which he filled with gnomes in 1867. There are many ancient superstitions about gardening, many go by sowing by the moon, others are a little bit more weird. Many ancient gardening manuals suggest sowing seed when naked, but this is probably a relic of ancient fertility custom. An ancient country practice, however, involved a gardener removing his trousers and sitting on the ground before sowing to ascertain the temperature of the soil. The simple rule being that if it was too cold for naked flesh, it was too cold for the seeds. 